some stuff from Amazon and some stuff from places like AliExpress came in. And this one is a bunch of rubber grommets. Possibly there's a hundred pieces of M6 size there. I don't know if there's a way to reseal this. Yeah, maybe like this. So I can take one out. If I have an enclosure, I want to be able to insert this in a drilled hole in an enclosure so that it can sit there securely and then just give me a good way to pass cabling in through. Grommets will keep the wire from getting cut on sharp edges or just keep things looking more professional. And this is definitely restocking. I'm not sure which end to cut. I see dip sockets. So mostly what I wanted out of this is maybe to get some in-between socket pinout sizes that I don't currently have. But also, with these 6-pin, as well as 8-pin, what I can do is put these together and make my own custom socket size if I still don't have an exact one. So sometimes I'm mostly dealing with 14 or 16-pin logic chips, but sometimes I need 18, 20, even like 28 pins for a GPIO expander chip or something with a lot of pins. Just as an example, if I have an 8-pin socket and then I put a 3-pin socket beside it, they line up perfectly so I can just treat this as a 14-pin dip socket if I needed to, or whatever else I wanted to combine to get a custom size. So that's the versatility I wanted out of this, along with some specific socket sizes with a bunch of pins that I don't currently have. There's three packages here that are different versions of the same sort of product, which is a MEMS microphone. M-E-M-S. I think that's micro or miniature electrical, electromechanical system microphone. So that's basically like having a condenser microphone on a chip. It's very small. And so these are just a few different styles of breakout board for those microphone styles. Basically, a condenser microphone is a capacitor formed by a fixed plate and then a movable membrane that can vibrate when there's sound. And a voltage is created which represents the audio waveform being picked up. So there's the little MEMS microphone package on this breakout board and if I'm not mistaken it looks like a power ground and then word select left right and clock and data so this is an I squared S serial audio bus. There's the next one with the module on top and when we flip it over is that like an audio port where that arrow is that's where the sound may get picked up and it looks like we have that I squared S bus and there's the final one with the I squared S bus and power pins on the other side. And why does this one have an arrow pointing away from that center hole? So these sorts of microphones, I haven't played with those, so I'm kind of curious to see how they actually work and how they sound, because supposedly they can handle the same sort of loud sound pressure levels as regular size condenser microphones, and they're used in things like smartphones or noise-canceling earbuds, anything where you need a small microphone, all kinds of interactive voice-activated electronics. So I'm going to experiment with this. I've used the I2S audio bus for outputting stereo digital audio before, especially with the Teensy and I believe with ESP32, but now I want to see about getting audio in. And, of course, stuff from Amazon. Uh, these are just button cell batteries. I believe that's 
for this old calculator. It's not solar dual power, so it died. And I remember a long time ago taking this apart, and I believe this is the battery for it. So I put it in the shopping cart to wait until I had enough things to place the order. And I just have to hope this brand isn't like a bunch of expired batteries or leaking batteries, but we'll see. I'll just get everything out of here. That's what was making the noise. I think that's it. I got these metallic Sharpie markers because, as it says here, it's good for dark surfaces. So usually I use the silver one, and I also, I think, have a gold one here. Yeah, I got, what is this? Yeah, gold and silver and metallic silver. Things like this are good for writing on any sort of surface, and sometimes I will maybe put a marking, like a ring around an alligator clip to show that I've done some sort of a repair on it. Like if they start failing and becoming intermittent or having high resistance, I might pull back this shroud and instead of the crimped wire, I might solder it, put this back, and then I want to remember this was a good one, so I'll probably take this and put a ring around it. So yeah, now we know this is all rusted out. So these are good for stuff like this, basically paint in a nice applicator. And these boxes, five pieces guitar effects box. 1590B is the style of this. And yeah, basically this is for putting guitar effects in to make stomp boxes. And it's got the four screws in there. It's a metal enclosure, so good for shielding against noise. So you would put a, an input and an output audio jack and a power jack up here or something. Some potentiometers or switches here for controls and a stomp on off switch. And create your own version of some sort of effect. So this enclosure is close enough to these in size and definitely in robustness. So make a PCB, throw it in there and hope for the best. And another Amazon package. Some of the stuff in here was inspired by another maker. This is one such item, an AC line splitter for doing easy current measurements breadboards, and that. This is a countdown AC timer. So starting with the breadboards, I decided to buy this three pack of Elegoo standard sized breadboards. So I'll get these out of here because I want to test them all to make sure they're fit for building a circuit on as far as I can see, at least mechanically. I'm not going to electrically do continuity on these and measure contact resistance just yet, but the ultimate test is, can I take a component and just insert it anywhere I want without a struggle? Like the way I struggle with eBay and those kind of cheaper breadboards like this that you get for next to nothing. So here's my existing Elegoo, and this, compared to these other cheap ones I got, obviously, years ago, this is so easy to use, like the ones I used to use decades ago. No issues. You take a part, you want to insert it there, go right ahead. Over here, there it is, and it's stable. So. I don't know if this breadboard has been worked in by now, but so I got it there. Right here, it's struggling. Okay, I got it, but it was a mess I'm trying to get that. Maybe the, this breadboard is really worked in. Here's one of these 
older eBay ones, so just picking any spot. Like right, th see that? I bent the component leads. I don't know if that's showing up. Just trying to insert this right here. Again, just another random spot. It is not going in. So if I keep pressing, okay, it went in. Over here, again, I'm struggling. One lead is in, okay, now both are in, but it's, I usually bend leads like every other time I try to insert one. So this older Elegoo one I got in the Super Starter Kit, it's the first time I had one. It's been working fine. So I got these three hoping, let's see. Okay, that went in. That went in, no troubles. And I switched to this electrolytic capacitor because that other one being bent now, it's hard to work with in general. So I just pick a spot and this just goes in no trouble anywhere that I want. I don't have to mess around with it. So that's what I wanted. Check the next one. No problems. And it just feels more secure, like it's gripping the whole time that I'm inserting it and removing it. This price is still cheaper than what I used to pay in a store in person years ago for the same good quality stuff, different brand obviously. But ever since I started buying them on eBay, it's not worth it. So I'm going to look to migrate over to the Elegoo stuff, or if I find another brand that also seems to work, that's fine too. Now this AC countdown timer, another maker had one of these. I don't know if it's the exact one. There's a couple of different styles. You plug this in somewhere and then you plug in the load and you can toggle through a countdown timer, 15 minutes, 30, an hour, two hours, four or six. And I think you can manually just turn this on and off without any timer. I'm not sure how it works yet. So the advantage for this, when I'm using the soldering iron down here, I had at least one time where I forgot to power this off. I usually pay attention and when I turn off the lights in this area, I look and see if there's any red LEDs on or anything. But I did forget once and luckily this thing thermally protected itself and kept just cycling all night. I'd rather come down here and set it for six hours or something and hopefully by then I'm done working on whatever. And if I forget to turn it off, hopefully this will turn it off for me. And another maker also had a similar product to this. Mine is the X-Tech version of this. It's an AC line splitter. So you plug this into a regular outlet and it will separate the hot and neutral and give you a receptacle on the other end to plug in whatever you're trying to measure the current for. So you can take a clamp meter and hook it on either the one to one or a times 10 version where I think they have more windings here so that you get a stronger reading in case you have something with a very light current load and you can't easily pick it up on the one to one measurement. There's also a couple of test holes here so you can plug a voltmeter in and double check your line voltage level. But the reason I thought this is useful, I've been doing it this way <laughs> where I plug this into the outlet and then I plug my load in here and I can hook the clamp meter on here, but who wants to do it this way? So now if I set that to measure AC current and I hook it on there, now I can plug this in here and not be able to see the meter. Then I can plug in this lamp here and turn the lamp on. And we have 173 or so milliamps. If I multiply that by 10, so it's 1.7 amps, I'm still on a 2 amp scale max. Put it on the times 10. And there it is, 1.7, well, 1.78 amps. That's good enough to get an idea of how much AC current something is drawing. So those are all the 
things this time, and I don't know where those three MEMS microphone modules went. There's two. There's the third one. Got to keep those in sight. So I definitely look forward to trying out those MEMS microphones on the I2S audio bus. And now I can do some testing of AC currents a lot easier and less janky. Hopefully add a little safety to the soldering iron and stuff like that down here. And restocking general stuff. I'm hoping these batteries are good enough to power this calculator because I always like to have a scientific calculator on standby for doing quick things, especially if I'm here with the scope. I'm trying to calculate something to double check. And really all I have that works around me here is this solar powered regular thing. So it's going to be good to have the more advanced one working again. And miscellaneous general restocking. Hopefully some more guitar audio or other effect type circuits into these enclosures. So, a big thanks as always, especially to Patreon and channel supporters for helping make all this possible. Let's see what we can build this year.